We live in a world that is obsessed with gender. We ascribe gendered connotations to everything, from our language to our mannerisms, even inanimate objects. Though for a world that is seemingly so gender-centric, we rarely think about gender until we are confronted with it. As a transgender person, I am confronted with gender every single day. From the moment I wake up, I reach out of my bed and pull on a hoodie to hide this body from myself. When I get dressed, I pull on a binder to flatten my chest. In doing this, I constrict my lungs, my breathing. Though without it, I wouldn't be able to get through the day. As you can see, gender is very much at the forefront of my life. I am unable to take gender from my mind most days. I am constantly comparing and contrasting myself to the guys that surround me. My voice is not as deep as theirs. My clothes do not fall on me the same way they would on them. Their height, their shoulders, their faces, even their hands. As I said, you can see that gender is very much at the forefront of my life. Though, I'm sure for the majority of you, this simply isn't the case. Most of us don't stop to look at gender under a microscope, while it is undoubtedly a huge part of our society. Take the hormones that run through all of our bodies as an example. While I'm sure the average person wouldn't take much time out of their day to think about this, these thoughts can cause much distress for a transgender person. Right now, in this country, I have to be on a waiting list for upwards of three and a half years to have access to these hormones, which I feel should already naturally be running through my body. And that is not fair. Life-saving hormones for many transgender people Hormones which put, would put ease to the distress that gender dysphoria causes. Being on waiting lists this long can be detrimental to a trans person's self-esteem, body image, or even mental health. A saddening 80% of transgender people have contemplated suicide in their lifetimes. For me personally, standing up here giving this talk isn't in any way hard for me because I'm afraid of public speaking. It's hard for me because I cannot bear to listen to the sound of my own voice. It's hard for me because I'm afraid. I'm afraid that you will judge me as less of a man due to the pitch that I speak in. And the thing is, I can change this but not without being on waiting lists for upwards of three and a half years. And that is not fair. I want you to judge me. I'm being serious. 
I can't read your mind anyway, you're okay. Am I too feminine for a guy? Maybe my mannerisms are a little bit too flamboyant. Maybe I'm a bit soft, am I? Or is it my body? My hips too wide, my shoulders too small. I think so too. Now, I'm not getting you to pick me apart for no reason. But rather, I'm opening a front door to my mind, letting you see just how important proper trans healthcare is. Every day, these are some of the thoughts that run through my brain. Every time I get dressed, every time I open my mouth, feminine, 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 girl, girl, girl. And as we've already established, treatment exists to make gender dysphoria diminish. Hormone replacement therapy, gender affirmation surgery, even facial feminization or facial masculinization surgeries, even things as simple as proper gender therapy. But the fact is that in Ireland and many other countries across the world, this health care simply doesn't exist. Or there are many barriers in place. In Ireland, we rely on what's sometimes called an outdated, a psychiatric model of care. What this means is that in order to receive any of the treatment which I have already outlined, you have to go to psychiatrists and you have to get two letters. And it is not uncommon for invasive or even completely irrelevant questions to be asked throughout this process. From here, you can access hormone replacement therapy, but not without waiting on incredibly long waiting lists, for which there are only three endocrinologists in Ireland. Now, it's not only endocrinologists which we are short on. There are no surgeons for gender affirmation surgery. We are forced abroad to receive this treatment. And for gender-specific therapy, for those of us under 18, we have, to get, we have to get this therapy from the UK, a service which only comes to Ireland a handful of times throughout the year. I think it's clear that proper gender therapy and proper trans health care does not exist in this country. We have to wait so long and go through so much for it. So, if you know someone going through this process, I want you to be there for them because it can be such a hard one. And if you are going through this journey, this process, I know it can be tough just to survive sometimes. But you will get to the other side. The thing is, I don't even feel deserving standing up here giving this talk because I've hardly started this process. But I think that that shows just how important proper trans health care is and just how much this health care needs to change. Because I'm scared. I'm scared of waiting. I'm scared of being told no. You can't have access to the self that you see yourself as. I'm scared of being told I have to wait longer and longer and longer. But as scared as I am, 
I can't spend the rest of my life standing in front of my mirror, tears streaming down my face because this body isn't mine. I can't bear to listen to this voice another second longer. And the only comfort that I have is that I know one day I can stand up and I can speak in a voice that I own. That one day, the people that I love can wrap their arms around a body that is mine. But the thing is, I and so many others have to wait so long and go through so much just to be able to breathe freely, just to be able to live as we truly see ourselves to be. And that is not fair. We live in a society that is so gender-centric. And we rarely think about gender until we are confronted with it. Well, here I am, confronting you. We have to go through so much and wait so long just for this health care that is so important and in many cases, life-saving. And I do not think that that is fair. Do you? Do you? 